Hello students, welcome to Notebook. What are the different occupations of people who live in your neighborhood? If you start listing the number of occupations or the number of things people do for a living at present, you will end up with a very long list. Starting from plumbers and gardeners to engineers and teachers, people of many different professions and occupations probably live in your neighborhood. Sometimes the same person pursues or follows a number of occupations to earn enough money. They might also pursue and turn their hobbies into occupations. A person who distributes newspapers in your neighborhood in the mornings may drive a cab in the evenings. The school teacher may also run a bakery and bake cakes and cookies on weekends. Around 2500 to 3000 years ago, what occupations did people in the villages have? Of course, they did not have half as many options or choices that we have today. In most villages in the northern and southern parts of India, there were at least three kinds of people. In the Tamil Nadu region, large landowners were known as Villalar. Ordinary plowmen were known as Uzhavar. Landless laborers or workers and the slaves were all known as Kadaisia and Adimai. In the northern part of the country, the Grama Bhojaka was an important person. He was the headman of the village. Often, people of the same family became Grama Bhojakas. That is, a son succeeded his father as the Grama Bhojaka. This means that this position was hereditary. The Grama Bhojaka was usually the largest landowner of the village. He had slaves and workers who worked for him and cultivated his land. The smaller landowners and the independent farmers in these villages were called Kriyapatis, men and women who did not own lands but worked on others' lands were known as Dasa and Karmakara, potters, blacksmiths, weavers and carpenters also lived in these villages. Farming was a very important profession. As many people began to take up farming, they had to increase the production of crops. To increase production, they started using iron tools and iron plowshares. They also improved the irrigation system or the water supply to the crop fields by building canals, wells, tanks and artificial lakes. We have just talked about life in the villages 2500 years ago. How do we find out about life in the cities? The stories known as Jatakas were written down and preserved or kept by the Buddhist monks tell us about life in the ancient cities of India. These stories were composed by the ordinary people of India. The sculptors carved scenes which described the daily life in towns. Their sculptures decorated pillars and gateways of buildings. One of the most unique or special archaeological discovery was the ring well. Rows of pots or ceramic rings were arranged on one on top of the other in many cities. These pots and rings were used as toilets, drains and garbage dumps in the houses of ancient cities. Accounts of sailors or travelers who visited the ancient cities of India also tell us about life in the cities. A Greek sailor described all the ports he visited in India. He provided a particularly bright description of the city of Baruch. Baruch is a city located at the mouth of the river Narmada in present-day Gujarat. Another speciality of the age was the punch-marked coins. These coins were usually rectangular in shape 
and made of metal. The coins were not inscribed but stamped with symbols using dies or punches. These coins were used and circulated for about 500 years. Apart from buying or paying with coins, people of one region exchanged objects with people of another region. People who grew paddy in the fertile plains could exchange their paddy and get salt from people who lived near the sea. A lot of salt was produced along the sea coast. Some towns or cities in India were centers of various important activities. One such city was Mathura, which was an important center of trade and commerce, travel, religion and sculpture. Mathura had Buddhist monasteries, Jaina shrines and many worshippers of Krishna. Inscriptions made on stone slabs and statues have also been found in Mathura. The kings, queens, officers, craftspersons and merchants who lived in the cities made these inscriptions. They recorded the gifts made by men and women to monasteries and shrines. The inscriptions tell us that goldsmiths, blacksmiths, weavers, basket makers, garland makers and perfumers lived in Mathura. Only the archaeological remains of some of the crafts of this age have survived. Most of the crafts have not survived. Manuscripts or written texts tell us that Varnasi in the north and Madurai in the south were famous for producing cloth. The craftspersons and the merchants formed groups or associations called Shrenis. The Shrenis of craftspersons provided training, obtained raw material and distributed the finished product or their crafts. The merchant Shrenis took care of the trade, that is the buying and the selling of the crafts. The Shrenis also served as banks where rich men and women deposited money. We find remains of different kinds of pottery from this age. The northern black polished ware or NBPW was found in the northern part of the subcontinent. The NBPW was a hard wheel made metallic looking ware with shiny black surface. The potter exposed these pots to very high temperature while making them in his kiln. So the surface became shiny black. Other types of pottery have been found in Arika Medu, in present-day Puducherry, in southern India. Stamped red glazed pottery called Aratine ware made by pressing wet clay into a stamped mold have been found. These were named after an Italian city. Archaeologists have found another kind of locally made pottery with Roman designs. Roman lamps, glassware, gems and pots from the Mediterranean region called Amphori have also been discovered in Arika Medu. Arika Medu was a coastal settlement where ships brought goods from many distant lands. So it is not surprising that archaeologists found goods and pottery from different regions like Rome and the Mediterranean in Arika Medu. Think about the region in which you live. Did this place have trade connections with foreign countries in the distant past? Ask your teacher, parents, neighbors about this and note down your observations. See you soon in our other videos. Till then, keep learning.